Let's talk a little more Indians baseball now. We bring in Matt Lodi from 92.3 The Fan, the Indians beat reporter over there. And uh, let's see, they play their next game on Tuesday night. Yep. What will this team look like uh, when they take the field? You know, that's a great question. I'm not really sure exactly where we're going to go with this thing after what happened uh, over the course of the last three days. You know, the big rumor, of course, is Sin Chu Chu possibly going to either Texas or Pittsburgh. I know that the Indians do want prospects in return for him. Chris Perez is another name that's being bannered about. Certainly his Twitter war with the fans today probably didn't go over all that well with the organization. But at the same time, Andy, I, I still got to wonder, this team is probably not going to give either of those guys up for much. I've also heard Derek Lowe's name and also Johnny Damon's name is being bannered about. But I can't imagine the Indians getting much back for them. And here's the thing, they've still got to play two months of baseball, basically. So no matter how you look at this, team it's got to be structured so at least it can be somewhat competitive over the course of the last two months or you're going to have a lot of problems getting fans of that ballpark at the end of the day i still think sin chuchu is the one name that could be moved only because of the fact he's got a year and a half left on his deal it's the same time they moved victor martinez a couple years ago when they moved him to boston for justin masterson along with nick hagedown when you look at chu though you're going to have to get some big things in return for him he's batting 295 12 home runs and 39 runs batted in and Scott Boris is his agent. Yes. I mean, that's a that, small factor, right? That, Indians fans, that's right? That's a huge factor. You talked yeah, about Chris Perez factor. for a second. He had a little Twitter war after the game today. Yeah. Basically, all he said was, I hear a lot of things on Twitter after we lose, but I hardly hear anything after we win. You know, I, I just think that Chris needs to settle down a little bit. I mean, look, this team just lost three games to the worst team in the American League Central, especially after the way they played last week against Detroit. They took two out of three. It was exciting down there again. The crowd was into it. That game the other night against Justin Verlander probably was the best game of the season. I thought them coming out in the seventh inning, getting the two home runs to tie the game up. You know, Chris has got to understand this is a passionate fan base, and it's easier to react when things go wrong than when they go right. I mean, Chris should understand he's been in this town long enough. He should just at this point just shut it down and just roll with the punches. You know, we love when he's out there. The fans go nuts at, 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 at you know, progressive field when he takes the field. Just shut it down. When you've got nothing good to say, don't say anything at all. And I think Chris Perez needs to just take a lesson from a lot of the other Indians players who you don't see or hear on Twitter unless things are going good. Go, speaking of going good, offense was going nowhere this yeah. weekend. I mean, they scored four runs against the Tigers. Uh, in that game against Verlander, and then they didn't score four runs all weekend. Yeah, it was pretty pathetic over the weekend, and I'm sure that, you know, the Indians have a lot of explaining to do, especially with the way that they went up today and took on a left-handed pitcher who, once again, they had no clue how to do anything against, especially after the fact that they thought they'd go up against Francisco Liriano, who I know he hasn't been good this year, but you know what? Brian uh, Dunsing's also not been uh, very good either. He's lost his last six outings. He was two and six coming in, and the Indians did nothing against them. They go up against a young uh, uh, player last night for Minnesota, Minnesota. They can't do anything against him. Scott Diamond the other night looked like Cy Young against them. This is getting really bad. The offense has been in a funk since the All-Star break. And to a man, everybody told me in that locker room the day after the All-Star break that they thought they needed to play better baseball in the second half, and they thought their best baseball was ahead of them. Well, guess what? They have played awful since the second half began. They were lucky to get two out of three against Detroit after going one and three against Baltimore. All right, let's just kind of look at the spectrum here as we head towards the trade deadline. Yep. You got buyers, you got sellers, and then like right there in the middle you've got don't do anything right I mean if you looked at me and you asked me where the needle is it's sellers don't do anything else. right I don't think they're gonna do very much fans I think at the end of the day they make my they make a minor move or two that's all that they're really gonna do I think the big move on the horizon would be Chu or Perez and I really don't think either of those two moves are gonna get done a source in Texas told me today he doesn't think the prospects are there for the Indians in order to move Chu to Texas Pittsburgh is an interesting opportunity especially if Sterling Marte is on the table but I just can't see the Pirates giving him up. He's one of their best prospects in a long time. Unless the Pirates think they can win the whole thing, and I don't think they can, I don't see Pittsburgh giving up. I think come Wednesday morning, this team is going to look very much similar to how it looks right now. Um, the one other name that I heard that was kind of surprised, Justin Masterson's name is out right. a little bit. That name came out earlier today. Texas and Boston were scouting him, and they scouted him in his last start as well. So I don't know where that came from. A little birdie told me that they're having some issues trying to get a deal done because they would like him here long term. Of course, they got him in that Boston deal for Victor Martinez a few years back. They can't get a long-term deal done with him. For whatever reason, there's some friction between the Indians and his agent. I think that'll all pass over. I think Justin Masterson is going to be here for a long time to come. I think, unfortunately, we're learning this year he's not the ace that we thought he was. All right, Matt Lodi from 92.3 The Fan, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Andy. Make sure you listen to him as the Indians get towards the trade deadline. Uh, what, 4 o'clock on Tuesday? 4 o'clock on Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. We'll have it all covered for all you. All right, so make sure you listen to him.